Are you looking for more information about APRS, specifically for handheld radios? We've got you covered. Today, we're going to break down exactly what the Anytone 878 UV2 Plus can do with its APRS capabilities so that you don't have to figure it out alone. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more of the ham radio knowledge that you need to succeed. With that, let's get started. So let's talk about APRS and what it can do for you. So APRS stands for Automatic Packet Reporting System. Uh, some people also refer to it as Automatic Position Reporting System. And today, uh, that's what we're going to be talking about. So let's talk about what types of APRS these radios do and what the differences are between them. So the 878 series, this is an 878 Plus here, uh, will transmit both analog and digital APRS data. Uh, this is location data, so it will transmit your coordinates. And then the cool part about this new radio, the brand new 878 UV2 Plus, not only can it transmit that location data, on analog, it can actually receive analog APRS information as well. So you can receive other people's coordinates. Uh, same goes for the 578 radio. It's not just for handhelds. Uh, these, you can hook up the built-in GPS antenna, uh, comes with the radio, and use APRS with your mobile as well. Uh, so the 578 UV3 Pro uh, is similar to the 878 series. In, in the fact that it will transmit both analog and digital APRS. And then the new one that just came out, uh, the 578 UV3 Plus, the brand new one that lines up with this radio, it can also receive the analog APRS. So without further ado, let's go ahead and show you quickly how to set up APRS. Uh, so this is going to be a very basic setup. You can do a lot with this. There's a lot of cool fine details. Uh, you can certainly dive in and learn more about it, but we're going to show you uh, the easiest and most simple way that we found to set it up. So I already have it set up on this radio right here. It will transmit APRS. Now with this radio, we need to set it up. So first, I'm going to plug in our USB programming cable. So I'm going to plug that in here on the computer and then on the radio. Now we are going to set this radio up to both transmit and receive uh, because we want to show you that. Now today we're only going to be receiving with this radio. We've already pre-set up the transmitting on this one, uh, but we're going to do both in this case. So open up your CPS on your computer. Uh, in this case it's for the UV2 radio. And then click on the COM port button. Make sure your radio shows up there. Uh, if there's multiple selections, then just unplug your radio, look what's there, plug it back in, and you'll see the top one pop up. That's gonna be your radio. Then click OK and read from your radio. That button to the left up top. And click OK and just read the other data. Uh, we don't need to worry about the digital contact list right now and, unless you're building the code plug and this is just another step of the process. There we go, perfect. Now at this point, uh, and I do have a list here, we will include this list in the video uh, so you can reference this too, uh, because there are a lot of steps you have to follow. So definitely reference the list as you go down. Uh, so we're going to, uh, first, we've read from our radio. Uh, now I'm gonna go up into Tool and click on Options. Now at this point, I want to make sure that the GPS Bluetooth, APRS, and then in this case for this radio, analog APRS receive are all checked. Uh, they should be, but sometimes they may not be if you downloaded a different code plug or potentially your radio just didn't have them checked. You wanna make sure they are checked if your radio is capable of that. Uh, there we go, click OK. Now we're going to go into the optional settings and go to GPS slash ranging and make sure that GPS is turned on. There we go, perfect. So click OK. Then, now we want to go to the APRS menu down below. Just like that. Uh, now we're just basically going to go down the list and go over everything here. Uh, so we don't need to worry about manual. We're going to go with auto transmit intervals. Now for the purpose of this, we're just gonna do 30 seconds, but you can set how often you want the radio to actually transmit at your location, or you can have it set up to do manual intervals. So we're gonna go with auto and keep going down here. Uh, we shouldn't, we don't want fixed location beacon turned on. Uh, now what this does, if you do turn this on, we'll do that for a second, it will allow you to use a fixed location. So you could literally type in uh, where you're located, the coordinates, and then your radio will transmit those coordinates. Uh, now that's actually what we're going to be doing with this radio today because we are in a building down here, we can't get the GPS signal, so it's not gonna be able to send out our GPS location, uh, but we can broadcast out 
a predetermined coordinates that we set in here. But most of the time, you probably want to use your GPS. So we're going to leave that off. Uh, I like to set mine to feet, the, the data as opposed to meters, but you can pick that. And then the display time, this is going to be how long it actually displays the message on the screen when you get it. Uh, I like to make that pretty long so we can actually take a look at it. We'll make that 15 seconds. It'll be great for the tutorial here. So moving down, uh, the APRS tone, uh, we want to set that to off. Otherwise, you're actually going to hear it, and I don't particularly want to. Then the, the two call, that should be APAT81. Then the two call SSID, we want that to be negative one. And then we want to have our call sign in here. That for us is W3AMG. Uh, let me see here. And then the SSID, we want that to be negative seven. So change that to negative seven there. And we don't need to worry about these different symbols at the moment. Uh, you can get into them if you're interested later. Uh, and then the DigiPeter path. So if you're going to be transmitting to a DigiPeter, now, what a DigiPeter is, it basically it takes your APRS signal and adds it to the internet. Uh, so there's a website, APRS.FI. Uh, you can actually see where everyone's located, you know, if they have their radio set up to transmit to it. So the proper path for that is going to be wide, all uppercase, 1 dash 1, and then comma wide uh, 2 dash one. And that was the proper path to make it to, to most common DigiPeters. Uh, so we're good there. And then the sending text, we probably want to edit that. That's the text that you're actually going to send out. So when your radio transmits that APRS message, that's going to send this text along with it. Uh, you know, so if you needed help, you know, you may want to put that message in here. Now typically most of us using this are just going to put in information like, uh, you know, in this case I'm just going to do testing APRS or uh, maybe you put your call sign, and it's going to have your call sign anyway. Uh, but you can put whatever message in there you want. APRS. So testing APRS, we'll do that. And then the transmission frequency. Uh, what you want that to be set to for, for most you know, common situations if you're wanting to hit DigiPeters is 144.39. So 144.39. Uh, now you can actually change this if you want. So if you want to set it up maybe uh, privately with some friends, uh, you can change that frequency and you know, use your APRS on a different frequency. Uh, just make sure you, you know your frequency limitations. And then the transmit delay, we want that set to 600. So we'll move that back a little bit here. Just like that. And then the, uh, we're gonna leave the tone off of here and that's what these are for, so you don't need to mess with these if you have subtone turned off, but you can if you want to. Uh, then the pre-wave time, that, you know, it's, it almost acts like encryption. It's not real encryption, uh, but it just adds a tone along with it. So you just have to have the tone on whatever you're receiving it on to be able to decode it. So if I transmit it with a tone, whoever receives it is going to have to decode it with that same tone. Um, then our pre-wave time, we want that set to 600 as well. Scroll up here real quick. Great. Alrighty, and then transmit power. Obviously that's up to you. I like to set mine to turbo. That way I can reach out as far as possible. And finally, the analog APRS receive, you want to set that to wide. Uh, now there's one more step, it's easy to miss. Uh, over on the right hand side, you do have to make sure that this position checkbox is checked. Sometimes the radio comes with it checked. I've seen uh, sometimes, depending on your code plug, it may not be checked. So just verify that that position box is checked or else you are not going to actually be able to receive any of this information. So looks like we have everything in good shape here. So I'm going to click OK. Uh, so we should be set there in terms of that. There's one more thing we need to do if we actually want to receive APRS which is to create a channel. So we're going to create a channel real quick. Just double click on the blank slot. And we want our frequency, the receive frequency, to be the same. So 144 dot, uh, I believe we use 39. And then you want to make this an analog channel. Um, we'll just, you know, bandwidth is probably not going to matter there from what, from what we've seen. 
and then the APRS receive and analog APRS mute. You want to make sure to check both of those boxes. Uh, now I also like to check the PTT prohibit because we're not actually going to be transmitting with this channel. Uh, and we are in good shape here. And I'm gonna give it a name, so we'll just do APRS RX for receive and click OK. Uh, now, before you write this to the radio, you do want to make a zone, or at least add this channel to your zone, or else you won't be able to get to it. So I'm just going to make a new zone here, AP, oops, yeah, APRS, thought I was overriding one. Then we'll take this channel we just created, move it across, click OK. Perfect, there we go. We are all set. Uh, so now you can click on the COM port button again, make sure your radio is still turned on and connected, and then simply write to radio. So we're just going to write the other data. And then while it's writing, keep in mind guys, you can turn the speed up and down on this video. Uh, if you want the video to go faster, uh, you know, turn the speed up. If you're having trouble, slow it down a little bit, uh, or, you know, pause it. What I like to do with videos, uh, if I'm having trouble understanding everything, if it's a new concept to me, I'll just pause the video after a step, complete that, and then keep going. Uh, and then you also have the notes, so you can follow along with the notes as well. So we have it written to the radio. Let's take a look at it here real quick. Uh, so on the radio itself, to be able to receive or set, turn on the APRS, uh, if we want to actually start transmitting, we'll have to go into the menu. Uh, now sometimes you do have to turn the radio off and back on. I have found that, so I'm going to do that real quick. So we'll turn it back on here. Perfect. So what you want to do, first we're going to find our zone here in a second, but, but first I'm going to go to menu and we will scroll down to, uh, let's see, APRS, we should have GPS turned on, and we're going to click on upload type and select A. Uh, you can either select the, the A or, or D option, we're gonna select A, click on that, perfect. So we are good to go there, and at this point, we can go find our channel so you get it, we'll press P2 to get out of our VFO mode. And there we go, APRS. Uh, so we have our channel there. And oh, there we go, check that out. How cool is that? We see our message coming across that it's receiving from this radio and it shows up right here on our radio. Uh, so you can now see other people's APRS location. We hope this video helped clear the air around what the Anytone 878 UV2 Plus can do and what it can't do with APRS. APRS is an important feature for many in the ham radio community, but there's definitely some fine print to keep an eye out for when making a decision. For more information about the Anytone 878 UV2 Plus, be sure to watch our next video to learn more about this modern, powerful DMR handheld. Thanks for watching. I'm Cody W3AMG73.